Welcome back to the channel on this very cold February day. I guess the uh, polar vortex stuff finally made its way to East Tennessee. Although not as cold as some areas, it is 19 degrees out here. And I believe that does not stop Tennessee Matt from getting out to the range because I got something pretty cool. Something unexpected. But it's something I've been kind of looking at and wanting for a while. Thompson Center Hawking Rifle. Now I hadn't looked for this exact one. I had uh, kind of planned on getting either a Traditions or a Lyman kind of, uh, you know, traditional classic uh, muzzleloader like this. So the story on how I acquired this rifle, I got a steal of a deal on it. I had an old lawnmower jack. Well, not old, but I had a lawnmower jack and I didn't need it anymore. So I put it on Facebook Marketplace for $125. This guy messaged me, asked if I would be interested in a muzzle loader. At first, he had one of the more modern inline types, and I've already got one of those, so, so I said, nah, not really interested in that. Then about a week later, he messaged me, said he had this. And I had never really done any research on these, but apparently production stopped on these in 2012 when Smith & Wesson acquired Thompson Center. These aren't made anymore, so that's pretty cool. But from watching other videos, I mean, this one does have some rust on it here and there. Uh, nothing that won't clean up. Got case, case hardening here on the, I believe this is called lock. Someone else is more adept at muzzle loader terms than I am. Let me know if that's incorrect. But that looks pretty cool. The worst part of it is like right here along the nipple. So not, not too big of an issue. The bore was filthy, mainly just with dust. So I soaked it down with ballastol, ran some brushes, patches down there. I think I've got it cleaned up pretty well. Took the nipple off, cleaned it out good. Another cool thing about this rifle, it does have set trigger. So once you cock it, pull the rear trigger, it turns the front trigger into an extremely light trigger. So much to the point that, no joking, you could literally like probably blow real hard on it and it would go off. Not go off, it would fire the hammer. It's a more technical term. The only other thing is the tip on the ramrod here broke off, but simple wooden dowel. I still got the tip, just take that one off make a new one or buy a new one if I can find one of those but in all honesty I probably won't use this all that much because I'll get a range ramrod just to use out here because they're just a little more convenient and a little better higher quality so let's get her loaded up here and take the first shot okay it is a, another day it's a few days later now we're back out here at the range and We'll go over a little lessons learned here with the, the rifle, but more importantly, check this out. There's gravel. They put gravel down at the range here. That's awesome. Especially come springtime, it can get very soupy out here. So that will help a lot. So as I believe was previously mentioned, I did come into this Thompson Center Hawk and Rifle here a little bit unexpectedly. Uh, so there were still a, a few supplies I had to get in order to use this properly. Range ramrod for one. Although this one does have folding tip there. And it could be stored you know, up here, but I did not cut it down. So if I do that, it will stick out a couple inches or so. And I am still working on getting this fixed. i got to get the old piece off, get a new dowel rod, all that good stuff. So my lessons learned about this. When you're buying a, a, a used muzzle loader, especially, make sure there's nothing down on the bottom of the barrel. I thought that it was, but I did not have the, I hadn't gotten this little specialty tool kit with the little prong things to get out um, patches and whatnot. And that had to make use of that because as you see, around powder and a ball down there. And of course, it was all blocked up. So once I got this and the new ramrod, I was able to clean it out, got my stuff out, and then whoever owned this last, I don't know when it was loaded, 
best I can tell on the serial number, it was manufactured sometime in the late 80s. There was like four or five patches down there. So once we got that all cleared out, flushed the barrel out with water, hot, hot water real good, and test fired just some powder through it in the backyard, and it did shoot the powder out the end of the barrel. So I think we're good to go. Let's load it up here and find out. And now that we got all this gravel down here at the range, I haven't used my tripod bag to, to set this on. Although you can tell on the butt end here, it, it's been set on the ground a few times before. But I don't want to purposely mess it up. So, patches, powder flask, powder measure. It's, let's put it on, we'll do 80. Start out with 80 grains of powder. And I'm still on the hunt for some real black powder. But for right now, we're just using Pyrodex. Not a huge deal, as from what I understand, Pyrodex can be a little bit cleaner. Not a whole lot, I mean, it's still black powder we're dealing with here, but it's not technically true black powder. So now we got the powder in there. I did find some online, but by the time I would pay shipping and hazmat fee and all that, that $16 one pound jar of black powder ended up being like close to 60. I didn't really want to do that. I'll just wait and find some locally. I have called around to a few shops. And like we mentioned before, apparently black powder is, and black powder supplies is about as rare as freaking nine millimeter. It's a patch, ball, put that in there. Ball starter. Ramrod. Got that seated firmly. And fortunately, I do have some caps. Ignore the hair. But this rifle did come with a few number 11 caps here in the butt. Pretty cool. And like previously mentioned, it does have a set trigger so we've got two triggers there so let's go up here to the firing line and see what we can do now i didn't bring any targets didn't bring my steel target so we're just basically shooting just to check for function right now and i don't have a functioning nipple capper so we do have to cock it all the way back but we are alone on the range we're pointed down range so not really an issue there i need to get one of those nipple those capper tools. All right, so we got our percussion cap seated on there and set trigger. We'll pull the set trigger first, get a real nice hair trigger on the front one, and hopefully we get a bang. I like the sound of that. Now, I didn't bring any targets with me, but there are some orange things up here. Now that we know it's now that we know it's functioning, we'll try to hit one of those next time. Now, from what I understand, there are differing schools of thought as to leaving this closed or open, getting air down in the barrel. I'm kind of under the same thought as Hickok 45. If there are any embers left, I want those to soak up some oxygen and burn up and now of course we will go ahead and take an old t-shirt here that I'm using for cleaning patches and although I do like my modern fancy folding knobs when you're messing with the, the black powder gun you just gotta have the classic old grandpa folder very sharp knife too by the way so we'll just cut off enough here for two or three cleaning patches I do have some actual regular cleaning patches but I've got a bunch of these t-shirts from where I donated blood over the years and most of them are getting kind of worn out anyway I use them for mowing the lawn and whatnot all right now we've got a couple cleaning patches 
down the barrel there. Ready to take a next shot. So again, 80 grains of powder. Seemed to be a good, good dose. And these are just cool. I love these old brass. Well, this one's not old. These little powder measures. Okay, so we got our powder in there. And as probably mentioned previously in the video, if you're like me and get easily distracted, black powder may not be your thing. So I always like to repeat to myself what I'm doing. Make sure that I put the powder in there first. And make sure if you do happen to screw it up, get one of those little things right there. Get your ball out. All right, that is good and seated. Let's see if we can get lucky a second time. I don't think we'll run into too much of an issue now that we've got the barrel all cleared out and that it seems to be functioning from that last shot. I think this time I'm going to try to get one of those uh, clay targets. <laughs> Missed. And I have no idea where it went because with a big puff of smoke, I can't see anything. All right, let's load it one more time before we call it done for the day. And as you can see, black powder is very dirty. And even with this power deck stuff, another 80 grains down the barrel, patch, ball, ball starter. Ramrod. Seated ball. We can grab one percussion cap and head back up. Now this is definitely one of the advantages of muzzle loaders. I've been out here for 30, 45 minutes now and I've made just a handful of shots. In between cleaning, uh, fetching cleaning patches from the bottom of the barrel there. You can spend a, a nice amount of relaxing time on the range and not go through a whole lot of money. Or ammo, especially right now. All right, last shot of the day. Set trigger and fire. <sighs> That's like some black powder in the morning. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. This is definitely the last time we're going to have this gun on the channel.